Hey guys, my name is Melissa Davis. I'm founder of After the Affair. After the Affair is a to the point online affair recovery program that's specifically focusing on the cheated partner in an affair. And today we have Dr. Eileen with us and she is the author of When It's Not About You. And we're gonna be talking about boundaries for the healing, um, for the hurt partner while you're healing from their affair. And we're also going to be talking about what to do when one partner wants to make the relationship work and the other partner isn't quite so sure or doesn't. So Dr. Eileen, thank you so much for coming on today. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. So um, I read your book and I, I started out pretty cocky thinking, oh, I don't need this for me, but I would love to read it for our interview and our work together. Uh, and I finished it totally like this woman's talking to me and I learned so much. Um, I'm applying everything you're saying to my life and I'm really uh, excited that I got to read it just for my own growth. So I'm really I'm glad happy. you're here. I'm happy you got something out of it and that you're using the information. So thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, so today we're going to be talking about boundaries and um, I'd love for you to start out with just talking about what boundaries are, because for me, when I was recovering from my ex's affairs, I wouldn't have understood fully what a boundary was or why I needed them or how they would help me. And um, so I'd love for us to just all understand what it is. So really a boundary is expressing what's okay and not okay with you. I think a lot, some people might not know what a boundary is because they aren't in touch with what's cool with them, what's not. They kind of just go into the relationship and until something happens that they don't like, do they then voice an opinion? So I think that um, it's like drawing a, li a line in the sand where you say, okay, this is what I, I expect from you in the relationship. This is what I expect from myself. And is that okay? you know, okay with you or not, because these are kind of the rules of what it is to be in a relationship with me in a way. Um, and this helps you and your partner know um, how to meet each other's needs and how to be there for each other and how to respect each other. So this is really a tool to grow as a couple, respect each other, not necessarily here are my rules, do what I say mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah, maybe rules aren't the best word, but just, you know, what your expectations are. You know, what, what you see in your partner and, and what they, you know, kind of need to do in a way to respect what it is that you feel is right. Okay, yeah, that makes perfect sense. So when you um, go through an affair and you've discovered it, I feel like for me and for um, our After the Affair subscribers, we all pretty much land in the same place of total earth shaking. Like our self esteem is all messed up. We don't know which way's up and we're often manipulated a lot by our partner. Um, so how do you maintain boundaries with your partner who's cheated? How do you even, where do you even begin with that? Yeah. And that's really hard because like you said, um, when you've been cheated on, you feel like, you know, your whole world has fallen apart. You probably lose a sense of yourself because you thought, you know, your relationship was one way. And then now you find out about this affair and everything you thought you knew wasn't true. So um, you, you kind of lose that piece of yourself. And you're also very emotional. So it's hard to know, okay, what is it that I even want now in this situation? And you're so confused and um, feel violated and betrayed and so many emotions. So I would say first would be to try to organize all that. You don't need to have the boundaries overnight. Um, take your time to really reflect, to go through all of you know, those emotions until you kind of try to set boundaries. Because what happens is if you try to like set boundaries while you're upset, you might say things you don't mean or that you can't follow through with. So if you say, oh, you know, that's it. If you ever do this again, or if I hear anything else about the situation, I'm gonna leave you out of anger and then something happens again and then you don't leave your partner or you, know, you don't stick to what you say, then your partner's not gonna take 
the boundary seriously and um, you either. So I think that's what happens when you're a bit emotional about it. So I would say first, try to, you know, go through the emotions. It's a, you know, a horrible thing that happened. Try to come to terms with it, decide whether you want to be in the relationship or not. Um, Cause that could be a boundary saying, okay, this isn't breaking off the relationship. Um, or you decide I want to make this relationship work, but you have to kind of start from scratch. I think I've seen couples with affairs or just learning about it. You have to restart a whole new type of relationship. And that's going to include those boundaries if you decide to go that route. So first would be to kind of collect yourself and then know what your limits are. And when you do start knowing your limits and setting boundaries, understanding your partner, even if they are the ones that had the affair, still might not be happy with that. You might get some pushback from them and they might say, oh, I'm not a child. I, you know, I can control myself. I'm not going to do it now. But then it's up to you to be the one that's saying, well, this is what I need to gain trust again. This is what I need um, for this relationship to work. And if, if that's not, you know, what you can give me, then I'm sorry, this isn't going to work. So I think, but knowing first before you say that, that you're going to be willing to follow through with that. Um, is very important. And then knowing you're worth it, you know, really knowing, I know you're the self-esteem, you're all broken, knowing you're worth it as a person to get what you deserve in a relationship and that um, to get the respect that, that you would give to a partner yourself. So I think those are very important things. And then following, like I said, following through, repeating and speaking up um, kind of in like a firm way. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's, um, that's a lot. And you know, I think that feels almost impossible mm -hmm. for me. You know, I would describe myself as a um, pretty bold person, but making and creating and understanding boundaries was terrifying for me. And I know that even speaking up for myself with like a silly thing outside of a fair recovery, I would be thinking about it all day, rehearsing what I was going to say and like sweaty and nervous. But as soon as I, and I'd make myself do it and hated it. And mm -hmm. as soon as I did it, I just felt like, <sighs> like, and it gets easier for sure, but it was so stinking hard. And so, um, just like you brought up Dr. Eileen, um, with all of the, you know, pain and confusion, um, and not really knowing what you need or want makes this really hard. Um, that's actually a huge part of what we do at After the Affair is just learning all like the, you know, what you're going through and how to deal with it and actually how to process your thoughts and then walking you through exactly how to, to make boundaries and enforce them and make it so it doesn't feel so scary. Um, because Dr. Eileen, once you make your boundaries, is it just like a a one time you're set and done or do you have to like constantly be doing this work so like the first time like you were saying with setting the boundaries very difficult because it's it's uncomfortable you haven't probably done it before you're um, scared of how your partner might react um, which it could be badly and you've already been through enough so it's difficult to take that initial step however once you do that, it becomes easier over time. And it is something that has to be continuous. Um, it doesn't just happen like one time. Oh, this is kind of, and it's a process of where you reevaluate with each situation and um, where you bring it up with each situation. So it really isn't a one-time thing, though it does get easier over time. Right. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. It, that's definitely the case for me and um, all of the men and women that we work with. We see them once they make that first plunge and they're freaking out about it, they see that they are still here and feel better about themselves. Um, but definitely, I think understanding that you're worth it, for me at least, is where that comes from. And um, you kind of almost get a pride in yourself when you start standing up for yourself. Would you agree? Exactly. You have to have your own back with all of this and know that not based on what your partner thinks or how they're going to react, knowing, knowing that you're worth having that respect and bringing that forward, even if it's uncomfortable and for a better reward later. If you kind of just like don't do what's uncomfortable or don't bring things up because you're scared of 
um, the reactions, then you're not going to have the type of relationship you deserve. Yes, definitely. And just in case anyone hasn't told you, you who are watching, um, you are most certainly worth it. Uh, I know that when you go through an affair, you question everything about yourself. Um, I did. And so I just want to speak right to you right now that you are absolutely worth it. You are worth the fight. You are worth fighting for yourself. Um, and so this is something that, that it's my heart that you see that um, mm -hmm. and really not just see it, but believe it. So I just wanted to throw that out there because that's like my, that's where my heart is on all of this. Um, I agree. <laughs> Yeah. So Dr. Eileen, when, you know, when you go through this, uh, an affair specifically, but in life, even if you haven't gone through an affair, you, you lose yourself. And I, I remember realizing when the affair happens, you're like, you question everything because you're like, wait a minute, when you said you were at work late and I was at the hospital with my mother, where were you? Like, you question all the events in your life, you question who you are, and you lose a sense of yourself and, and your whole history, essentially, so how it feels. So how do you, you talk a lot about, you know, being self-full and being really uh, aware of, of yourself and taking care of yourself. So how do you take care of yourself and maintain um, a sense of self after an affair, especially when your partner is manipulating or gaslighting you to death. And that's tough. You know, it's really hard when you're in a relationship to maintain a sense of self, but especially when anxiety is high and um, when your whole world falls apart after an affair. So one thing I would say is to try to become more self-aware, tune in with yourself, um, you know, try to bring in your thoughts and feelings without being judgmental about them. Um, bring them in, be observant of them, become aware of them, because those would be good cues to let you know kind of where you're at and what you're thinking and feeling, regardless of what your partner is saying to you. Another would be to, I know it's a process and it's hard, but learning to kind of let go of the hurtful things. Um, and that's not a one-time thing. Think, oh, I'm going to let go and that's it. Um, there will be reminders, there will be things that come up. But when you're so angry and you're holding on to all the pain, it's hard to, to know yourself, to, to manage kind of your, your logical brain and, and what you're thinking. You're going to be acting more from kind of emotion. So um, part of that process would be to try to let go and not, you know, hold on too much. Another is, I think, especially with affairs or any problem in life, people avoid and they don't face things head on. So just try to pay attention when you're avoiding the problem because that will keep you further away from yourself and what it is that you really want and how it is you want to live your life. Because avoiding, like say avoiding setting boundaries or saying what you think might be okay in the short term to manage how you know anxious you get about it, but in the long term it's not going to deliver you what it is that you want in your relationship and it's not going to have you holding on to your sense of self. Um, another would be to start then navigating that anxiety, you know, seeing where it comes up, trying not to make decisions based on anxiety, but based on what it is you want long term. And another really important one is self acceptance. Um, I think to maintain that sense of self, you need to accept you, like we were saying, with work, knowing your worth. And I know that's probably very hard, especially after an affair, if you feel kind of rejected and, you know, your self esteem is feeling low that it's hard to accept you when you feel like you've you're the partner that you've been with isn't accepting you so it's trying to find that acceptance of self and worth even in in this process and that will help you lead, lead you back to yourself yeah that's a lot of work you know trying to let it go like you just said that is so hard especially when it's new um, which a lot of people here watching have newly, maybe in the last year, I'd say it would be new, found out about their partner's affair. Um, and so that's work that does take time. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, this isn't going to happen overnight or even a week, just to give you some expectations. Um, you know, I would have expected myself to like be able to do that in like five days, like a crazy person. <laughs> Um, so, you know, understanding that that is a process, um, 
definitely that's what we work through and after the affair constantly teaching you ways and how to process all of that. Um, it is hard. It's real hard to do that. Um, but you're, I, I think you're exactly right. Like when you focus on them or the anger and the pain, you're just giving them more of your bandwidth, you know, like how can you find yourself when you're so focused on them and their choices? Right. Exactly. And it, you know what, it's okay to lose yourself a little bit and get lost in that anger. But then over time, when you want to get your life back together, there's no timeline on it. Um, you know, that's something that, that could be worked on that could help you to find your, your way back to you and back to your life. But of course it's okay to kind of like, you know, lose it and be angry and, you know, have go through that process. You've been betrayed. It's, you know, a terrible thing that's happened and to honor that. But then over time, when you do want to regain that sense of self, working on how you can find that forgiveness, whether you stay with your partner or not. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's hard. Um, you know, in your book, you talk a lot about people pleasers and you describe yourself as um, you were previously a people pleaser. Uh, and I can see that a lot in myself. And I also can see it a lot in our subscribers. Um, not everybody. That's not a blanket <laughs> statement. But um, tell us what a people pleaser is. And, you know, if you are a people pleaser, I think it's especially hard to heal and to set boundaries after an affair. I mean, you, you might agree. But if you'll explain to us, you know, what you mean by that when you talk about that in your book. Well, pleasers are people that put others' needs before their own. Um, they also look to others to tell them how to feel and what to think. And they base their worth on, on that. So especially with an affair, if you're a pleaser that's you know, been cheated on, you might still be too concerned with how the cheating partner feels and maybe how your family is going to think about it. Or if you have kids, what they're going to think. And then trying, you might put it all on yourself to be the one that fixes it all and soothes things over, um, pleasers tend to also be perfectionists and they don't like to have, you know, issues or problems out there. So they might try to think, oh, this needs to be fixed right away. Um, so that's kind of how it can affect the pleaser. And I would say to that is to let yourself kind of be the hurt one. Try to tune into your own feelings versus what your partner is thinking and feeling. And that it's okay to kind of, like I said before, to fall apart a bit and to kind of need help and to be the one that reaches out for help, not always the one helping everybody else. So as a people pleaser, I um, mean, you just said so many things, you know, <laughs> focusing on them and making them feel better. I see that a lot with, um, it's like it goes hand in hand with manipulation that I see. Um, from all the emails we get. So a, a common example would be um, the person who cheated is uh, feeling annoyed that they're still upset or crying. And it's only been a handful of weeks or months. Um, they're feeling impatient with the fact that they are not over it. Um, and our subscribers are like, well, I'm trying to make it better for him or her. And I'm trying to only cry here or like, so they immediately try to like fix it. Um, so I see that a lot. So how does a people pleaser start putting their needs first, which is so hard? It's really hard and because it, it doesn't let you honor yourself or your pain and you feel like you have to have it together all the time. And you do, I, I see a lot of people put like a time, timer on feeling bad. Oh, I should be over this already, you know, I should be done. but. I mean, there's no like script for that. So um, I think that a person, you know, if they want to put their needs first and they feel like maybe that's something that might help in the healing process, that they need to first try to focus on them versus their, the cheating partner, or the people in their family, focus on and try to understand what it is they need to get through it. Because the more that they try to hinder their process of, you know, healing, which through healing comes being upset, crying, getting angry, you know, whatever it is you need to get through that, letting yourself, not feeling weak because of that, 
that is actually a normal human emotion. You don't have to have it all together all the time. And um, I think the ultimate reminder is that you are lovable and you are worthy, even if you're, you're going through something, even if you're upset, even if your partner did something to you that might be something that you never thought would happen. Um, so I think, I think a lot of acceptance comes in with that and you know, trying again to gain that sense of self and knowing who you are apart from what your partner did and apart from like maybe what your family and friends think about it. Because I know not only do you have the incident, but then you have everybody's opinions and you know thoughts about it, whether they tell you, oh, you should have just left him or her or you should be doing this, or they might judge how you're responding to it, and you might try to put on a good face just to appease other people. But um, I think it's okay, whatever you end up deciding to do is trying to make peace with that and come to terms with it. And, and know that it's okay to be affected by the affair and your process is your process. And um, that's you know, what I think. That makes sense. Does that answer your question? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, you know, one thing we talk a lot about uh, after the affair is um, moving through the pain and not trying to go over it, which you're talking about as well. Um, and it's very hard. It's more fun to uh, try to numb yourself or uh, ignore it or just check out in any way, shape, or poss possible. But um, but it's not going to get you anywhere. So. Um, one thing that I see people struggling with when they're trying to put their needs first, when they never have, um, especially like, you know, for me, I got, I married my college sweetheart. And so I had never even been single really ever. And so, um, I realized, and, and most of our subscribers realize that they, um, you know, they don't know who they are. Like they have to like learn who they are outside of a relationship and so that's a hard process to start but a lot of people start at am i being selfish by putting my needs first what do you think about that well in my book i talk a lot about um it's not selfish so i call it selfful because a lot of pleasers have a really hard time with the word selfish um putting your needs first is actually good for your relationships and good for your people in your life when you know who you are and um, you know, kind of what makes you happy and what what's okay with you, not okay with you, like we discussed before, that helps to build a strong relationship. It also helps other people be more responsible because if you're clear about that, you'll help your partner or anyone in your life be more responsible for themselves because they know like how far they can cross it with you. So pleasers end up getting, you know, those things happening to them a lot of the time because not, it's not their fault, but in a way, people cross lines with them because subconsciously, consciously, they, they know, you know how far they can push it with certain people. So, um, so I think that it's not being selfish. It's being considerate of yourself and other people at the same time. Yeah, and in her book, um, or in your book, you have, um, sh you go into this a whole lot, um, and I really like it, talking about how when you're overperforming and doing everything for everybody else, they all just like, whatever. Like I can see how like, even like I have three daughters and if I like rush around and do everything, are they going to jump up and help? Heck no. Mm -hmm. um, but if I'm like, Hey, you got to do this, this and this. And then I just leave it to them. Then they know they've got to do it. Uh, and so that's a really, it's a cool thing. Like reading your book just gave me so much, um, perspective on that. So definitely, if you haven't read it, definitely go out and get it when it's not about you. It's so good. <laughs> um, so I do have one more question before I let you go. Um, so this happens to a lot of us after an affair. One of us, whether it's us or uh, the person who chose to cheat, um, wants to stay in the relationship and make it work. The other one just flat out doesn't or isn't sure, a lot of times they'll go back and forth between the other person and you. What, uh, what relationship advice do you have for us in those situations? So 
No, that's a very hard situation. And what I would say is that we can't change the other person and we can't change your mind. We can only work on improving ourselves and our part of that relationship. So I would say work on the change that you wish to see. If you want to go to therapy, you can still go to therapy without your partner. If you want to get into like an online program, you know, do the work, you can do the work. And through that, sometimes your partner may change to a degree, but, um, or may not, but however, that's what you have control over. So um, working on you, working what it is that you want to see, and then in hopes that maybe um, some change will take place. And I know you can't um, change your partner or control, you know, kind of what, what they're going to do. So there's, I guess, acceptance in that too. Um, knowing you can't change your partner, you can just work on changing yourself and then kind of see what happens from there. So working on your part. Yeah, that's hard to do. Um, the work on yourself not necessarily hard to do, but understanding, like really understanding you can only control yourself. Like I can only control how I respond to things. I can only control who I am. Uh, I say it all the time to my kids now that I've gotten it for myself. Like you are not in control of those people, just you. Um, it is a really hard lesson to learn, especially, you know, a lot of us, when we discover an affair, we have kids that are, you know, you have a family to consider. And, um, and it's a real scary place to be when you realize you can't control their choices, but their choices affect not only you, but all of your family. Mm -hmm. um, and so I see a lot of people grappling and like trying to maintain and fix because, you know, they're doing it for everybody. But if both people aren't doing that, it just will not work. It can't. It can't work uh, unless you completely let go of all your boundaries and let everything go and you just are a little puddle on the floor crying and losing your mind all the time. You know, like, so we get that that's hard. It's easy to just say it. Um, it took me a year after I discovered um, the affairs to finally realize that I couldn't control um, his choices and I couldn't control the outcome um, and the choices, you know, weren't healthy choices still that I could, you know, keep up with. And I was terrified because I had a newborn baby and a three-year-old uh, and I was a stay-at-home mom. So understanding that in my soul, I get it super hard, but to keep learning, keep doing the work, um, go out and get Dr. Eileen's book when it's not about you. Um, that type of work, focusing on yourself is going to just make you just a stronger person, um, especially speaking to the people who have kids and families or grandchildren to consider, you know, I eventually, it took a long time, but I eventually landed at, you know, I want my family together. This isn't what I asked for. This isn't what I expected or, or saw for our future. But, you know, while my children have were too young to know what was going on. It completely sheltered them from that pain. But, um, you know, they can still see a, a parent who is very strong and chooses healthy choices. Um, you know, moving away from those people pleasing attitudes, you're teaching your kids these really healthy choices for their life. Uh, and that's an amazing gift. And most of us parents want to give the world to our families. So, um, do this work. Um, in the comments below, feel free to leave questions for Dr. Eileen. We will definitely do our best to respond to you and help you out. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. We put out a lot of content. We do our best to help you and give you tools to heal and move through this process. Thank you again, Dr. Eileen, for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Yeah. And again, if you haven't read this book, go get it. It's so amazing. You're going to be really happy with this choice.